What to know about bankruptcy other than it's awful and it's a pain and you're gonna jump through a lot of hoops. Get familiar with your chapters. 7, 11, 13. Those are your biggies. There's other chapters, but for our purposes, those are the big ones. Chapter seven is usually a straight liquidation, assets or no assets. And that usually is either a person or a company. So it can go either way. So when you see that come through and it says no asset at the top, Pull your file together, just get ready for that rough conversation. It's gonna be a little tough. If there are assets, it still may be a little tough. And I'm gonna have John go over a couple of the nuances with you. Chapter 11, probably my favorite because it's like a three ring circus. So chapter 11 can be a, what they call a dip, which is debtor in possession, which I find ironic since the same guy that took the company into bankruptcy, you're leaving in charge of him to help lead you out of bankruptcy. Seems a bit of an oxymoron, but okay, we're gonna go there. Usually a trustee involved and it'll be asset or no asset. Usually it can be a chapter 11 reorganization. A company's gonna try to get back on its feet. And then a chapter 13 is what's known as a wage earner bankruptcy and that's where a sole proprietor is going to do a payback, it's usually over a five-year course, and it's significantly less than what you're owed in full. However, he's trying to do the right thing. I can respect that even though I'm not happy about it. So you've, you've got a couple of things coming your way. The biggest thing with bankruptcy is to know the who, what, why, when, and where. Let's map it out on the whiteboard, shall we? In the world of bankruptcy, knowing which category you fall into is critical. Three big ones to remember. You've got your chapter seven, which is a easy way to remember. It's usually, hey, we've thrown in the towel. We're not gonna continue as a company or as, as an individual. We're gonna throw in, it could be asset, no asset, depending on what the company or the person has. Chapter 11 is probably your most complicated because unfortunately there's so many nuances with it. There's dip, which is debtor in possession, kind of ironic considering they're usually the people that put it into bankruptcy. There's trustees, it could be asset, no asset. It could be that they're going to continue in business or it could be a liquidation. There's all kinds of nuances and there's layer upon layer with creditors committees, uh, proof of claim, all the different things that go with that. So really pay attention to that one when it comes through. And then chapter 13, which is also known as a wage earner bankruptcy. And that's usually for a sole proprietorship, maybe a partnership. And that is tied to a payment plan, usually through a trustee, and it's paid out over five years. All of these will ask at some point for a proof of claim, unless there's a straight no asset and the trustee is deemed there's not even enough to gather those. Best rule of thumb is once you get that, marshal all of your paperwork together, read what it says, find out what you need, and connect with your bankruptcy attorney. Bankruptcy is probably one of my least favorite topics, but it is a huge hot button and the misconception is that once you get that bankruptcy notice, ugh, just write it off and shut the file and we're done. And that's absolutely leaving money on the table in some cases. Not always. The major chapters we have are 7, 11, and 13. We want to cover a little bit about, and, and I know we could talk like for hours on bankruptcy, but some of the key things that you see that credit people or, or and anyone in the industry does wrong when they get a bankruptcy notice. Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head. And the, the first thing you see is, well, people put up their hands and give up. Um, I think what you need to do is bankruptcy has its own unique set of laws, just like your, your standard construction laws, state by state. Um, you need to, to find someone who is savvy in bankruptcy court and bankruptcy law. And you need to get in line and make sure that you're following all the processes that you need to do to make sure that your debt is shown in the list of, of all of the uh, creditors. And so you need to get in line and, and monitor that process, but you need, that is when you, there's, there's no choice. You need to get a bankruptcy attorney, find out what they're going to charge you to track it, and then you, you're making that decision of, okay, I want to go through this stage of the process. If it turns out when we see what all the assets are, if we're way too far down the line, then we decide to give up then. But I always recommend to go in stages. And so let's figure out where we are in our list to get paid. Is it going to be possible for us to get paid or is it not? But spend the resources to, to get to that point so that you can make an intelligent decision. And after that, you're, you're going to be in court and you're going to need an attorney who is savvy in bankruptcy court to, to, to follow the process out. Can I use my same litigator? 
Certainly, if, if, if they are knowledgeable, but just know that your, your, your buddy attorney who does everything that walks into the door may not be savvy in bankruptcy. It, it, it's got its own practice, and it really is a niche uh, field of law. So is, if your attorney knows that field of law, then so be it. But make sure that he or she does, because if not, you're going to need to find someone who specializes in that. So bankruptcy works a lot like mechanics liens. Everything has a timeline and a trigger. So if I want to um, look at the list of creditors, if I want to go to the meeting of the creditors, when I file my proof of claim, uh, if I want to, uh, in any part of that process that I, I need information on, you get a bankruptcy notice. As a credit manager, you put it aside, you don't follow through. And occasionally, the filing party, the debtor, doesn't follow through either with the court and it gets dismissed, which is different than discharged. Do you want to tell the difference between discharged and dismissed? Because that gets confused a lot. Well, when you have a case that's dismissed, um, that means that the case is no longer before the court and you're back to the status quo before the filing of the... Which means I can get my money. I can, I can well, nag them for my money. You can now begin nagging them again. Okay. Hopefully they have the money to pay you. Okay. But uh, the debt being discharged is a process where the court can essentially wipe away that debt, um, where um, that the discharge of that debt is now not going to be paid to anyone. It's now legally not owed. So okay. definitely a big distinction there. <laughs> um, and I think that you know, going back to how much are you owed, you need to decide how much uh, of your resources you're going to pour into this to pursue it. Um, but you need to find someone who, an attorney who's savvy in, in the bankruptcy laws. When we're looking at that process in bankruptcy for priority, and I always want to know where I sit, and you talked about assessing that. Certain things that you've been able to do with creditors up until that point, when, I, when I'm looking at my customer and they're, they're you know, I'm, I'm now seeing them go bankrupt. If I have a mechanics lien or a judgment lien or a, a cross corporate guarantee or any of the remedies we've been talking about, how do those affect my standing? Am, am I able to claw my way a little bit higher up so it, it gives me more security than just the average unsecured oipoloi down there? I would say generally less, um, but you need to know what that specific law says about where you rank. So it is a detailed, it's complicated, it's... Uh, it's I don't like complicated. I want you to tell me my mechanics lien makes me go here. I, I wish I could, but um, it's, it's one of those uh, responses where I have to say you have to look at exactly what the, the law and the statute says. Uh, generally, you're going to have more rights with a mechanics lien than just a standard debt owed under a contract. Uh, but, but to specifically see where you fall in, you need to know all of the other parties, what their lien rights are, if any, what their contractual rights, if any, what their timing of their claims are. And so it, it's very detailed. It's uh, one of those situations where, um, you know, we, we're going into the small claims court, you can potentially handle it on your own. Going into bankruptcy court, you, you need to have an attorney who knows all the ins and outs of that law so they can guide you through where you, where you stand in the process. So you need to have that, that guide for the foreign land. That's right. That's everything for lesson three. The fourth and final lesson is about the holistic credit department. As companies grow, the needs of the credit department can change and evolve. So stay tuned. This is just a small taste of a much larger class. You can take the full class for free at levelset.com. Join me.